I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building, and today we're at an infill project in Columbia, Missouri. And we're gonna talk about why we're not using drywall as our air barrier on the ceiling in this job. Let's do it now. Okay, if you have paid close attention to the Hilltop Aero Project, to the Hybrid House, to the Spring Valley Aero Project, all of those jobs, uh, three of the last few houses that we built, they have uh, zip sheathing as our air barrier on the walls, concrete floor or basement uh, as our air barrier down low, and then it transitions to the inside at the top plate with a Advantech runner or flange, a third top plate made out of Advantech, and then we strap the ceiling and then we put drywall on the underneath side before framing any interior partition walls, and that drywall was our air barrier. There are a couple challenges with doing it that way. Number one, all those drywall penetrations that you have in your ceiling, which are kind of unavoidable if people are gonna do ceiling lights or uh, smoke detectors up high, those things have to poke through your air barrier. That can be a challenge. We've proven that we can successfully do it. You know, we have those three houses that I just talked about, the hybrid house, the Spring Valley Aero project, and the Hilltop project. Those are all below passive house levels of air leakage. I think they're all below 0.5. So it's totally doable. However, we're trying to be better in every instance. In this instance, we're trying something new because we're trying to be better. And uh, this is a combination of something that Steve and I have been talking about, Steve Basic and uh, Randy Williams. If you don't follow Randy, Northern Built Pro on Instagram, uh, Randy's got some cool stuff. So what we've done here is we ordered, this is a straight gable truss. We ordered our trusses with a plenum in them, meaning the trusses come in on both sides for about three feet. They make a vertical change in elevation and then they flatten off again. The ceiling up here will be flat when we're done. You can see that we've already started to infill frame some of that plenum. What we've done is instead of adding that Advantech flange, that third top plate, in its place, we ran a layer of uh, Sega's Myrex. So Sega's Myrex is an air barrier or a vapor barrier, depending on how you install it. Uh, go and check out some of our videos on vapor so that you can understand the difference and why it, why it would have two different install methods. Uh, that Sega flange now is, you know, it's fabric, it's their, their, their Myrex, it's taped to the Advantech, or to the uh, zip sheathing, sorry. It's flapped to the inside, trusses are set, and then we just added more of it. So it is the horizontal of the bottom of our truss and the vertical. Uh, the lid, the uppermost part of our plenum here, could have easily been done with the Sega Myrex. It didn't have to be a material change. What we have here is we had to special order the zip to get it here. We had some pieces left over, enough to do this. Uh, rather than take it to our shop and store it, we decided to use it on the ceiling of that plenum. And then the um, HVAC guys run all their duct work and their mechanical system up there. They can then nail or screw wherever they want. They don't have to find a joist or a framing member to get to. Uh, so just made their install slightly easier. It's probably more work for us or the framers to heft all those sheets up there, but you know, it's a give and take when you have to special order materials, you know, is it worth it taking it to the shop? No, not necessarily. So we zipped the top of it. Like I said, could have been Sega on all of it. It could have been the zip sheathing on all of it. Um, the Sega is a little more cost effective per square foot than the zip in this instance. So it's a little easier to make an argument that we just do the whole thing out of Sega next time. We triple top plated the wall up here before we got to the point where we're at the Sega. That way we could two by four strap underneath the Myrex. That two by four strapping is enough room for us to pull uh, lights, to pull wires, whatever, through that space and have them be above our drywall ceiling but below our air control layer. Uh, the interesting thing here is that air control layer that goes with that plenum, that's where our insulation layer is gonna to begin too. So everything is happening inside the envelope. You can see there's ductwork and a ducted mini split up here that serves three bedrooms and a bathroom. In our like uh, hallway top of stair landing, there's a return, but then we're feeding one supply to each room. All that happens inside our air control layer and inside our thermal control layer. All the insulation's outboard of that. Yes, we don't ever want the HVAC HVAC system to leak, but if it does, it's leaking inside of our environment instead of into a super hot attic where then we're gonna have condensation or things like that. So we're switching things up, we're doing things a little bit different, we're trying new methods. This is the perfect house to try little things like that on because this house is only 
1,700 square feet over three floors, so it's tiny. Uh, now we're going back in and infill framing all these walls now that we have the air barrier up, the HVAC guys got in before we started this two by four ceiling. Now we're gonna punch in the rest of these walls. Electrician and the plumber. The plumber will have one penetration for a vent back here that he'll have to deal with. We have one set of line sets that come down from this that has to go through our air barrier. Otherwise, all the electrical happens underneath that. All the HVAC happens underneath that. It's a whole heck of a lot less poking holes. So no matter how you do your air barrier, by limiting holes, you limit those possible problems. So this is, uh, I think this is gonna be a bomber system. I think that this is really gonna work. So far, assembly's been easy. So far, the materials are not terribly expensive or anything like that. Uh, we're happy with it. I'll let you know how it turns out. We'll do a blower door test on this house at some point. So stay tuned for more from the Aero Infill House here in Columbia, Missouri. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. There are two newsletters a week. You're gonna miss some of the content if you don't catch the newsletter because we do a really good job of saying, hey, don't forget to watch this, don't forget to watch this. Everybody's putting out great content. I learn from everybody else on here every single week. I watch a video and I go, huh, I didn't know that. You know, it's real easy to miss it. So sign up for that newsletter. Don't forget to follow Steve Basic, Peter Yost and I on the Unbuild It podcast every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Have a good day.